So guys, today I'm going to be mixing it up a little bit and doing a very interesting tag video. This is a video that I kind of just really thought it'd be awesome because I found one of my, or refound one of my favorite pieces of bushcraft kit. And I was thinking that this would make a really awesome video to do, especially a tag video to do. And so today we're going to be talking about... Uh, and just doing a tag video on not only my most interesting piece of bushcrafting kit, but everyone's most interesting bushcraft kit. So before I go into who's tagged or, you know, my particular piece of bushcraft kit that's very interesting, I'm going to be talking about what are the qualifiers for your most interesting piece of bushcraft kit. And so as far as it goes, it's pretty basic. It just has to be a piece of bushcrafting kit, whether it's a knife, axe, backpack, you know, gun, whatever it is that you use for bushcrafting. And it has to have an interesting story. Either it was passed down to you from a great grandparent or, you know, you found it on the side of the road. It just has to have an interesting story or it has to be in and of itself a very interesting tool that means something personally to you. You know, we often get, you know, brand new knives and brand new knives are really cool or whatever, you know, backpacks, guns, whatever but they really don't have any story they don't have any history and so while they're awesome and they probably work very effectively you know they they aren't the most interesting pieces of gear we own and so today that's kind of what i wanted to talk about is the most interesting piece of bushcraft kit i own and i think you guys will really like it because this one it's it's very interesting so as far as it goes you're probably expecting it to be maybe like my first bushcrafting knife you know my sog seal pop elite you know and it, it, this is certainly an interesting knife it is really cool i definitely like it and like i said this is my first bushcrafting survival knife i've had it for around six years now have used the heck out of it it's a great tool works well but that's not my most interesting kit or piece of kit and you may think maybe it's something expensive like my bark river knives bushcrafter uh you know and it, the bushcrafter is certainly one of my favorite knives it's another great piece of bushcrafting kit i'm sure one day it'll be interesting uh but it's still not that it does have a pretty cool story though uh, but still, it just can't compete with my actual most interesting piece of bushcraft kit. And most interesting piece of bushcrafting kit is not expensive. I actually got it for free. Uh, it doesn't have any leather, steel, uh, nylon, plastic, any of that. It doesn't have any of that on it or with it. And it's not even actually made in this century or the last century. The last several centuries that preceded those. And it is this and I'm actually going to remove my mittens so you guys can see it a little bit better. It is this. Hopefully you guys can see this. Now I changed the lighting a little bit. It should be a little bit bright, but hopefully you guys can still see this. And this is a primitive hand axe and not only a primitive hand axe but an alaskan or northern primitive hand what axe. makes this what piece makes very interesting is like i said it's not only a primitive hand axe but i actually found this so to give you guys a little bit of the story behind this i found this around i think 2013 so that's around four years ago and so i found this four years ago i was walking along a trail and i just found this you know it was a kind of rocky area and so i just found this there and at the time especially at that time I was really interested in primitive stuff and so immediately when I saw this I was like oh my gosh this is a primitive tool and so I immediately grabbed it up and I had to learn a little bit more about primitive tools before I fully knew what this was but this is an Alaskan or at least I'm 90% sure it's an Alaskan or northern primitive hand axe and the reason why I have to state that this is a northern uh, or Alaskan tool is in the northern regions of the world, especially in Alaska, unlike the more like southern areas or just like kind of mid areas that have a lot of access to things like flint and obsidian, up here in Alaska we do not have access to any flint or very, very limited amounts of flint. So most primitive people, especially in Alaska, never actually made flint tools, but rather they had to make primitive tools out out of things like slate and quartz. Now this is a slate uh, piece of rock here and how they made these was that they would find this piece or they would break off a piece of slate that was you know roughly this size and then they would take it to essentially a large rock that they could sit upon and essentially they would take this piece of rock and it would be in a more unrefined version and they would essentially rub it against that large rock for 
days to actually grind in these types of profiles here and this type of tip. And like I said, this legitimately, this one here, I don't know how rough of a condition it was in the beginning because I only found the finished product, but this probably took about a week, if not actually more, to just grind these bevels. And so essentially they would just sit there on that rock doing this for like a day, you know, or days plural. And so they would just do that until they achieved these types of angles and this type of tip. They would also find parts of their large grinding rock that were profiled and they would grind in things like this, you know, just once again, sitting there, you know, just chipping away and just essentially grinding, essentially speeding up that grinding factor that happens naturally in nature. They would speed it up to make a tool like this. And this is what it looks like in hand. This is how you would hold it. It actually fits perfectly in my hand. That's something that I love so much about this tool is as a hand axe, this is how you would hold it. And this one actually fits perfectly in my hand. This little area right here, it sits right there in the meaty part of your thumb. And you'd essentially hold it like this and strike down on pieces of wood like this. And it is not comfortable at all to do that. But you guys can see, hopefully you can see these impressions I'm leaving. Essentially that is what you would do with this uh, tool or this hand axe and you would just use that to chop down trees my most interesting bushcrafting tool and actually my most prized bushcrafting tool because you know a lot of these other tools they're more expensive and they work a lot better than this hand axe but none of my other tools have the history the you know just overall story behind it that this one does I mean like I said this one is way older than any of my tools could even hope to be and you know has a story that no one really even knows it's just such an amazing piece of uh, kit and you know it takes you back to a time when like bushcrafting and survival was actually just life you know this you know nowadays our life is separate from bushcrafting or survival but this was back when bushcrafting and survival that was just called living life so that is just something so awesome to look at and once again to admire the handiwork of this tool you know this person whoever it was you know spent you know probably like I said at least a week making this piece of tool here and you know I don't know how long they used this you know if this was the tool they used for like the rest of their life they used it for like 50 years or something you know it's just really hard to know the history behind this tool but that's the awesome thing you know it could have had such an amazing history and that's why I'm really super happy to have it and why it's one of my most cherished pieces of bush crafting kit is because I said it just has a story that nothing Primitive, else has. You know, this just has such an amazing history behind it and you can see like I said this tells you a lot about the primitive peoples in Alaska and how they didn't have materials like the people did in the state. Once again if you guys watched my seven survival lessons I learned from Alaska I mentioned a large portion was materials you know and we don't have things like flint and chert uh, or really high access to obsidian so the primitive peoples here instead of using the flint napping as a skill they would you know use things like grinding and chipping away at these pieces of things like slate and make their you know tools that look like this so it's very awesome to see the very high differential between you know alaskan or northern tools like this one and you know uh, primitive tools from the lower 48 so it's a very awesome piece in that as well that you get to see a totally different piece of gear made with a different mindset and different material accessibility. That is my most interesting tool. Like I said, lots of history to it. And hopefully you guys enjoyed taking this quick look or this maybe longer look at this really awesome piece of Alaskan primitive history. And I hope this guy's, or I hope this has kind of shown you guys just what a little bit of Alaska is like in this primitive piece here. So as far as the tag and who all is tagged, in the past I've definitely tagged specific people but for this tag I just want to make it really open because I think there's a lot of people who have I think everyone really has a most interesting piece of kit so I'm really curious just to see what all everyone has so if you've watched this video you've been tagged essentially and if you want to make a, a video on this definitely go for it and if you want more exposure leave the link to your video in the comment section below I'll definitely check it out and probably comment on the video and 
I'm really curious, like I said, to see what all just the interesting pieces of gear you guys have. And keep in mind, it doesn't have to be this interesting. It doesn't have to be something primitive like this. I know I may have set the, the standards a little high here with my piece of gear here, but it doesn't have to be thousands of years old. It doesn't have to be primitive. It's something that you could have, you know, it could have been literally your first bushcrafting knife, or it could have been your grandpa's, you know, backpack that he gave to you. You know, it doesn't have to be something primitive like this to for it to be very interesting so anyways guys hopefully you've enjoyed this video and don't forget to comment like share subscribe and leave your response in the comment section below hopefully through a video i really like to see videos of what you guys have for your gear you know what's your most interesting thing and the story behind it anyways guys that's it i'm out